Wesley Timoteo, brilliant to have you on. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, so just want to touch on a few things that you achieved in the last last season with myself, because that's how we know each other through FC Edmonton. You had uh, 28 appearances, 27 in the league with us. Yeah, Three exactly. goals, six assists. Um, and then uh, now you've just currently signed with uh, F- with Halifax Wanderers yeah. in the CPL um, on a multi-year contract. Um, and then before you came with us uh, at FC Edmonton, you were in the Cypriot top division, Cyprus top division, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And what was the team? Uh, Xilo Timbo. We awesome. used to call it Pox. Why is that? It's uh, just a uh, short term of that team. <laughs> Is it? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. And then uh, you had uh, first team appearances with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every game was that I played was the first team. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So I just want you to uh, talk a little bit. Like I said before, we, we knew each other from FC Edmonton. Um, you came in on a, a trial basis, which we'll touch on a little bit uh, later on. Um, just give me your uh, uh, a brief summary on how the season went for you, for the club, for everything as your, your experience with Edmonton last season. I mean, individually, I think, like you just touched on it before, it, it was a good season. Uh, if I start talking about how oh, individual, individually it went, I think uh, I'm happy with the season I made. Um, at the beginning, it was a bit tough because, you know, new guys on the team, a lot of uh, unexperienced players mm-hmm. in uh, professional levels. So it was tough for a bit uh, for everyone. But after a few games, we found ourselves and... Uh, it helped me. I, I gained confidence from the coach and from the players. So I was more on the ball and I, I had the chance to show what I could do. And at the end of the season, of course, uh, it paid off all the work that I do that I did during the weeks, paid off during the game. So happy with the season I did. And uh, as a team, everyone knows it wasn't uh, the best of the seasons. But uh, I think we were in almost every game. We fought really well uh, com- Everyone knows the situation that we've been through uh, during the whole season. So uh, if we look at it like that, I think since we're in every game and we we never got uh, demolished, I could say, by the other teams, I think mm-hmm. we could take as a positive season for the conditions that we had uh, all together. Yeah, so lots of people probably won't know the circumstances for the club that uh, uh, we didn't have any players at the start of the year. Uh, we were only allowed to sign... Um, players on minimum contracts, essentially players that um, maybe weren't considered quite good enough for the for the CPL or maybe were on the on the fringe of other teams that wanted some more significant minutes. Um, and then that's kind of um, a good segue into how you kind of uh, found us too, because you came through the trial system. We had uh, maybe about six, seven weeks of, of trial players, probably close to 100 players come in uh, for an entire week. Um, we trained every day. We played multiple times a day. Um, so uh, just maybe touch on like how how you found out about the trials, um, and then uh, what was involved in your end, uh, and how you thought it went, and the whole process with that. So it's uh, it's funny because uh, I was I was in Portugal, and uh, for already like a year I wanted to join the CPL, but I never had uh, any contacts to join or to like find me trials since I moved to Europe at such a young age. And um, I was, I had the chance to play with uh, Tyler Tardo that played for Valor a few years ago, play with me mm-hmm. in Cyprus. And uh, I decided to contact him. I was like, you never know what, uh, who he knows or what he can do for me. So I contacted him and he put, put me in contact with uh, my agent right now, Joshua. And uh, I got lucky. He found me at the trials in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. I literally packed all my things. I was just in mm-hmm. Portugal, you know, to stay in shape. And uh, as mm-hmm. soon as he told me that I could go to Edmonton, I packed everything. I didn't leave anything behind. Came back home for three days in Montreal. And uh, honestly, didn't. I just opened my suitcase for the first three days. And then I closed <laughs> it and went straight to Edmonton with everything. Yeah. Most of the players you went to the trials with a small luggage. But no, I just brought everything because I had one thing in mind. It was to sign there. So, yeah. uh Honestly, I actually, I actually remember one of your first days too. I remember uh, watching you play, and I was thinking, like, this is someone that we we could benefit from. Definitely, like left sided players or left footed players as well. They're they're uh, such a an important um, uh, aspect of of any team, any in any league. You know, they're they're less 
in demand. I guess they're more in demand. Um, but I remember you you playing really well. I think you're in a, a wing back or a left back position on day one, yeah. um, and then we kind of moved you around a little bit. But I was always impressed with um, your attitude when you came in and just how you played and, and linked up with a few of the other players. So um, yeah, I remember it myself too, very very clearly. After about day two, I was like, yes, I think we need to sign this boy. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my Honestly, involvement. I remember watching. So. Honestly, I I came with no stress, you know. Like I said, I packed everything. I came and I knew what I had to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, because of previous experience back in Europe, trials that I didn't make, uh, I can count so many of them that uh, at the end I got declined by every team. So coming to Edmonton, I just told myself, do what you what I could do, show what I know what to do on the field. And uh, at mm-hmm. the end, it paid off. You know, every day I was going yeah. and I was grinding. I was really think about myself and that's it i wasn't thinking about the other players or the team or whatever i was chasing my contract because mm-hmm. at the end at the end of the day that's where that's why we were there on during the trials yeah. is to chase my contract and not for the others so exactly i mean the grind that i put on for those two weeks and a half i think it paid off and uh mm-hmm. at the end uh, i was pretty happy with the job that i did cool. of course yeah i mean you ended up getting signed um i guess there's going to be a lot of players that kind of um go through this process too. The, there was close to 100 uh, players during our process um, for the trials uh, with Edmonton. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be something that is extremely common for for other players trying to reach that professional level or a semi-professional level, whichever level it is. Um, so you came in with a suitcase and you threw all your eggs into one basket, so to speak, and, and just went for it that week. So... Um, the mentality that you had to have coming into the sessions each day. Uh, do you remember what you were focused on in the morning when you were getting ready? Because this is something that a lot of players are going to kind of, they're going to worry about, you know, they show up in the morning and they're going to worry about what attitude they have, what, what impresses coaches, what they're looking for. What, what was your mentality showing up each morning? Honestly, it's just giving my hundred percent every day. I, I used to, I give myself a routine cause I was staying at an hotel uh, start off with a nice breakfast, you know, show up to the dome and just give my 100% and not stress about anything, you know, to focus on small details, uh, mm-hmm. not missing simple passes. And then you gain some uh, some confidence, self-confidence, and then that's when you start to do uh, longer balls, you know, dribble some guys and everything. But my, I remember my first few days, I just wanted to gain some confidence and, you know, stay consistent as much as I could and not mm-hmm. have one good day and one bad day, you know. So uh, yeah. I remember after sessions, I would go back to the hotel, make everything that I could to be ready for the next day. Uh, I remember mm-hmm. picking up a small uh, injury on my ankle uh, after the first week. And I was a bit stressing about it uh, at the mm-hmm. hotel, but honestly, I did everything I could, uh, ice it, uh, yeah. put some cream to be ready. And uh, thank God at the end, it was okay. But yeah. uh, honestly, if I could give one uh one advice is just not stress about anything. Don't overdo. Try to do the simple things first, and then you're going to gain some self confidence and be ready mm-hmm. for the the bigger things. So that's a, that's an important part. On you just touched on, um, uh, you just touched on the preparation side. You know, like how to recover and getting a good breakfast in. Um, it's it's the things that we don't see behind the scenes that are super important for for those young players who want to get to the next level, etc. Uh, you know, you can show up and play for 90 minutes or, or however long a training session is, but if you're not able to recover properly and, and do put in the work outside of the training session, you're, you're stretching, you're rolling, uh, your diet, you know, the, all those extra uh, aspects, they, they, add up, they, they add to the percentages that you might not be able to uh, compete at the next day. And especially if you're training every day during that trial period, five, six, seven days, um, you're gonna you're gonna struggle going into the next morning yeah. if, you're, if you're not willing to put that extra extra mile in. Yeah, I think so, it's. Yeah, I'd also think it's for me the probably one of the most important parts is the preparation because if you want to mm-hmm. be ready, you'll be a hundred percent on the field. You have to do what you need behind the scenes, and uh, which is nutrition, sleeping early, uh, waking up mm-hmm. early, and just do everything you can to put all the chances on your side, which exactly. I did, and it worked out so. That's what I kept doing during the whole season. <laughs> that, that great, that's, a, that's a good um, introduction. So uh, I wanted to let you kind of speak on your, your next steps too, because now you've had 
a full season under your belt. You know it worked out for you after the two and a half weeks um, you were signed. Um, and the way that our um, uh, like kind of players' uh, contracts worked was that they had to be signed with another team in the league. Um, and your team was Halifax. Yep. So um, they were impressed by your, your season last year. And um, now you've signed a contract extension. Is that correct? So yeah, a multi-year uh, extension? Two years plus one, yeah. So the two years is a guaranteed contract on guaranteed, um, yeah, exactly. for them. And then the plus one is what so exactly? Club option. Just... It's a so club option. So what does option. that mean for them? So that means after I get myself two seasons to show them that I could stay for a third one. But uh, yeah. honestly, my focus on the first one, and then we'll see what happens cool. after. But uh, it's time for me to to show two years in a row what I could do. It's not just exactly. uh, stay on what happened last year. Last year was last year, and now we're into 20, uh, yeah. 2023. New season and uh, new team, new uh, city. So just for me to get yeah. uh, going from the first day. It's almost like another trial period, isn't it? Where you go, you go into a new team and you've got to find your feet. You have to impress the new coaches because obviously they yeah. have a new technical staff there too with the previous coach leaving and it looks like there's um, a few other players that have moved on and then some new players that are coming in. Um, were you were you close with any of the players from from last season or any of the incoming players? Do you know anyone? Yeah, from? yeah, yeah. I know uh, a lot of people, uh, not a, play, a lot of players from last year. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them are from Montreal, so we were actually training together during the off-season. Uh, yeah. I know some guys from Toronto also. I met the coach already, so... We all stay who, in who touch. Who are you training with right now? What what players from the CPL or for Halifax? Uh, well, from the CPL, most of all the players from Montreal, I could name guys from Forge, uh, Cavalry, mm-hmm. any team, even MLS players. Uh, we all yeah. train together. We all push for yeah. each other because we all have we all have one goal and uh, is to succeed in this in this sport. So we push each other. Mm-hmm. But uh, from Halifax, I train with Zach Fernandez, Sam Salter. Uh, Ludo Amla, the striker. So mm-hmm. we we start to build a small chemistry in here. So we're ready nice. for free season. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's going to be important. Yeah. Um, are any of them? Um, did you play with them just in Montreal? Or were you, were you, did you be part of like a, a national team setup in any way? NTC stuff. Uh, I actually grew up with them in Montreal. Uh, we grew up t- playing together in Montreal. Sam, yeah. I could remember in 2012, we had a, a tournament in Portugal together. Zach, I remember playing with him at uh, CF Montreal Academy. So it's guys I grew yeah. up with and uh, a lot of quality and we're very excited for the next season. Definitely. Um, yeah. So now you're in uh, in the off-season. You mentioned earlier, um, just off camera, uh, that your your preseason starts February 28th with Halifax. That's your, your sign-in date, right? Yeah, so we're going, back. We're going back to... Yeah, exactly. So, so currently, just kind of explain what uh, the off season of a professional looks like. Your day to day, whether it's a, a busy day or if it's a quiet day, what what does it look like from start to finish? Of course, uh, we're in a situation where not a lot of a lot of leagues are into, which our off season is pretty long. Um, so after the long season, after twenty eight games, I give myself uh, three four weeks more relaxed. You know, I would play some sports with some friends, go swim, go play soccer, um, but just for fun. Uh, but in December, I started practicing uh, at a good level uh, almost, almost every day, which was uh, my mornings would be waking up around 8, 9, go practice from 10.30 to 12.30 with other CPL guys and uh, our uh, personal coach. And then uh, in the afternoon, depending on the program that Halifax sent me, I sometimes would have gym in the afternoon. Sometimes it was just resting, which is important also uh, mm-hmm. during the off season is to rest because you don't want to get to your team's preseason already tired. So mm-hmm. right now, as of January, I'm practicing every single day of the week. Mm-hmm. Plus, we organize some uh, some late night games at like uh, 9 p.m. some on Thursdays and Saturdays. We do seven v seven just to you know get some rhythm into and uh, play against quality players. Of course, so we're, ultimately we're it sounds like you're responsible for your own fitness. Um, yeah, just coming into preseason at an acceptable level, not yeah. so not tired, my, not half a no exactly. Type thing. Well, I have my program with Alifax that they sent us, so they, they mm-hmm. s- we stay in contact and uh, we know what to do every single day, what exercise to do. We stay in yeah. contact with. Do you our, have to check in with anyone or anything or? Yeah, so it's like a program, uh, an app that we have 
and yeah. uh, every day they send you what you have to do and mm-hmm. you put the weights that you use and all these things so we we stay in contact with the 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 coaches and uh yeah. after on the field it's it's me i decide when i want to go practice but uh we all love that part so for me i'm on the field almost every day yeah, it's my favorite part of playing soccer so of course. i that's try to get as sport, much touch that's in the why we love again. this game yeah, yeah exactly that's we why we're it. in this game we love it exactly. that's that's ultimately we we can do all the, the all the preparation all the diet all the the weight training and everything all the fitness but ultimately yeah. it just comes down to getting your your foot on the ball and and oh, playing, that's and that, the best part of it right it's to yeah. play as much as we could so Exactly. That's what we've been doing every single day. We push for each other, and uh, we're all going to be ready for the preseason with our team. So, can't complain um, about this off season. Exactly. I mean, in your off season, I guess you were able to watch a good chunk of um, the World Cup as well, hey? Yeah, yeah. So, sadly, uh, uh, being being Portuguese, <laughs> I guess you were a little bit upset by how the the the, the winter period was. Yeah, I was expecting a bit more from my team. Uh, good, pretty good generation that we have in Portugal. Yeah. And, golden uh, generation <laughs> for me it's well from this the 22 years of my life it's for me the, the best team that we've had uh Definitely. i remember 2020 uh 20 uh sorry 2004 we had a pretty good team but i was very young so i was expecting a lot from this team this year i was like mm-hmm. at least a semi-final and i'll lose in the quarters against uh, morocco so yeah it was what hard your, to digest uh, but it was i bet yeah what were your thoughts on uh, how canada did anything stick out for you I, I I watch every single game. Uh, first game got really really impressed. I mean the game against mm-hmm. Belgium was a very good very good game from our part. I think we we deserve more than that. At least minimum a tie. I could mm-hmm. even say a win because uh, we were very close from it. Um, the game against Croatia, I think we just got so hyped from the first game that we thought we could do to a, the same team to a Croatian team. But we have to remember that Croatia was in the in the final in 2018. So very good team. Uh, but also, as a Canadian team, young Canadian team also, and uh, having been in a World Cup in many years, I think uh, we just should be proud of the guys for what they did and all their, their, their route to get to the World Cup. It was amazing. So uh, yeah. proud of them. And, uh, Brilliant. We'll be ready for 2026, that's for sure. Yeah, I guess we're... Uh one of the co-hosts as well. So it's going to be exciting to uh, exactly. be part of maybe the CPL during that period of time too, where the, maybe the, there's a little bit more attention on the league from yeah. from the world. And, and um, you know, just, just it'll be a good place to be at the moment in the next yeah, few I think, years. I think Canada going to the World Cup this year was uh, very good for soccer in Canada in general, for the CPL, for, for everyone. I think mm. uh, people are going to look at Canada a different way. I remember when I was playing in Portugal, I used to say I was Canadian. And uh, people would laugh at me and be like, uh, are you not playing hockey? Like, what are you, why are you playing <laughs> soccer? So uh, yeah. so I guess people won't say that anymore to our young players going back to Europe. So uh, No. Well, that's that's uh, now the perception maybe of, of Canada as a football nation is probably changing. It's probably evolved over the last couple of years now with Canada being um, voted the... Uh, FIFA's best team from last year and putting in some some good performances from from this World Cup. Um, how do you think um, the I guess now you're, you're European at the time. Maybe you've heard a few other things too. The, the perception how it's changed from maybe when you were living in Europe in Portugal and in Cyprus um, to how it may be perceived now um, now that they've uh, been to a World Cup. Well, I could give you some examples. I know. Uh... I got contact. Uh, so a lot of my old teammates in Portugal are calling me, asking me if the, if I can find them a way to get in the CPL. So that just shows oh, that just shows how much uh, Canada changed everyone's per- perspective uh, in soccer mm-hmm. in in Europe. So uh, I think we should be proud of what we did in the World Cup and uh, how it helped soccer in Canada to grow. And now we could see people talking about us in Europe in the biggest yeah. levels. Some some of my friends played in big clubs like Benfica and Sporting. Now they're asking me if they could come play in Canada. So are you helping so, anyone out? I tried. I tried. Now it's, <laughs> it's between them and the clubs. I can't do anything. I'm not a I'm not an agent. You're not going to so. act as an agent, no? <laughs> not yet. I'm just focused on myself for now. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so I guess now, uh, like you, you said that you had an agent and uh, and that um, he was help trying to help you out. And uh, how, how did you go about that process? From 
being, uh, you know, like you were a trialist with us, but you had an agent at the time. Is that right? How, how does that process work for maybe from start to finish? How do they find you? How did you find him? Um, the agency, et cetera. How does that work? So, like I said, I contacted uh, Tyler to see if he had any plugs for me to come on a trial to to the CPL. And he put me in contact with Joshua, which is still my agent. What's now. the agency? Uh, Eakin Sports. Okay. And uh, so we started talking a bit on the phone over WhatsApp. I was I was in Portugal, like I said. And as soon as he found me the trials, everything went well. I stayed in contact for those two weeks with him. And the day uh, I got offered a contract, I also got offered a contract from his agency. So, uh, mm-hmm. do you, do you know exactly what the role is of the agent in in that discussion of a contract and or a transfer? Like, do you do you know what they do? Are you able to well, explain I mean, that at all? I mean, it's it's everything's easier with an agent. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, they know all the rules, the FIFA rules, and all these things. Mm-hmm. So, they're the best person people to like negotiate a contract for yourself. Because um, yeah. obviously you. that's going to be a, a, a sticking point for a lot of these these young players, you know, who are trying to um, reach the professional level or or move on to whichever level they're trying to move on to, and and agents can be a, quite a large part of it. Like I experienced it myself this year, yeah. where um, a lot of you guys have uh, agents and they're looking out for their players' best interests. Some players maybe without agents and and maybe struggling a little bit, but um, yeah, like so so you reached out via someone yeah. that you already knew. To, yeah, to so I think I think an, an agent, honestly, in the life of a soccer player is really, really important. I mean, also, I got offered many times back in Europe uh, contracts with agencies, but you got to be also careful with who you're talking to. Some, Let's be honest, in this world, uh, people, they're willing to do anything for money, and uh, sometimes you got to be careful who you're signing with. So before I sign with my agent, honestly, I try to create a bond we create a bond with each other. It's more like a mm-hmm. brotherhood than anything, you know, like I know I can trust him and he can trust me. So it's someone I'm open to talk to about if I want to negotiate something on a contract, if we want to talk about family or friends, we talk about everything. So I think that's the most yeah. important part. And it's not just in the soccer business, but I think it has to be like more than that for you to trust someone because let's be honest, he's the one that negotiate your, your career. Yeah. So yeah. If you're not, you, uh, you touched on an interesting point there with your your family and, your, and like just how they how they get to know you. Um, like you, obviously your family are involved and you're, you're obviously updating them on what's going on and the process yeah. of you know signing a contract or transferring. Um, like what what what's their role in in your life and how, how what have they done for you? Oh you know, my parents, uh, yeah. I I think I could never thank them enough for what they did to me. Uh, mm-hmm. Not everyone they're gonna let let their kid leave to Europe at such a young age like I did, like at fourteen. How old they, are you? At fourteen years old. Fourteen. I, uh-huh. I moved to Europe and uh, they knew that it was my dream and uh, to play in Europe, and they just opened the door for me. They helped me. I remember my mom had to move to Portugal for one year for me to get wow. my uh, for me to get my uh, my rights to play in Europe because really? I had a small problem. Uh, transferring to to Europe with visa with uh, with the it's a rule that the FIFA had. Uh, it's before sixteen right. years old. You you have to be living with your parents if you want to play in Europe. Um, even though I'm Portuguese, it was it was tough. So mm-hmm. she left everything. Left my sister. Left my dad here just for me to to get uh, that small paper to play in Portugal. <laughs> yeah. So I think I owe everything to my parents. You know, like. Uh, wow. This year, they traveled to Edmonton to watch my games. They traveled to Toronto, traveled to Ottawa, traveled a bit everywhere just to yeah. watch me play. So, uh, honestly, every time I step my foot on the pitch, I have them in my mind, also yeah. as my sister. And I think uh, for all the sacrifice that we did as a family for me to be there. So, yeah. uh, if there's a big so part what, of what, a big part of me you, plays for them. I yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, what would you have done if it, it didn't work out? They've, they've sacrificed everything. What would it have done if it didn't work out? <laughs> That's an amazing question. Uh, What's your plan B? I'm not like my sister, I could say, in terms of schooling. Uh, I was more into sports. So I I always said to myself, if it was in soccer play, it would be a coach yeah. or a, a physio or something involved in sports. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I also play golf. So maybe I could just, I would have switched to we golf. <laughs> 
So uh, honestly, I had something I never I was thinking, but not very serious because I could I was on a right path, I could say. But we mm-hmm. never know with soccer. There's injuries. There's uh, there's anything could happen at any day. So of course, I have some things in mind, but for now it's do you have any like hobbies that you do like uh i guess during season you know because once you've done training for the day maybe you watch some videos maybe you do some, yeah, some yeah, of your own well, like kind of a I love, performance analysis what do you do i love to watch sports uh yeah. nba nfl uh anything that includes sports i love it mm-hmm. i also go play golf often sometimes in the simulator since it's snowing outside um yeah. And I like to watch movies also, you know, Netflix. I like to relax. Like I said before, a part of my routine is staying home and relax. So you got to find some things to do. You know, I mm-hmm. play video, video games sometimes also just to get my mind uh, off sports because I, it's if, if you're always thinking about the same thing, soccer, 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 I think at one point you get a bit tired. So yeah. uh, especially yeah, in the off season. Mentally, mentally I, try to do, I try to do other things than only soccer just to be fully re- focus on soccer when the season starts yeah you're a go- you're a golfing man as well aren't you we, we talked about that during the season too so yeah. would you go around playing with uh, a few of the other boys on the team what have you like i know a few of them have got other hobbies you know a few of them have like maybe clothing uh lines or, or yeah. brands or anything that this or something that they're starting um do you have anything going on like that what you, you like well, golf, so. starting with the clothing brand shout out to darlington <laughs> yeah what's uh, that one yes uh he has a nice clothing brand and uh, it's Is that what you're starting to right go world, right? Sorry? Are you wearing it right now? No, no, I'm still waiting oh, for him to get send him my stuff, clothes. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he can but, come through. I'm pretty sure he's going he's mm-hmm. gonna to link me up. But um, honestly, yeah, I played golf with uh, Marcus and uh, Dre. Uh, yeah. It was fun, you know, like in our off days, uh, just go there, have some, some fun, you know, outside soccer is just it's nice you know some side bets uh just to make everything more interesting also so with just D, everyone that probably won't know like that was andreas Weichler, goalkeeper andreas Weichler and, and marcus, marcus as well right marcus simmons yeah marcus yeah. simmons yeah. yeah so uh we create a a little group there golfers also with d our keeper coach uh yeah. we would go almost i'd say every week or every two weeks um yeah. i didn't go as much with scott or our physio because he's way he's too good for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's good at golf, is he? He's a very good golfer, so yeah, we try sense. to not go as much with him. But uh, <laughs> no, honestly, it's a great group of guys, and we had fun uh, outside the field also. So yeah, I miss those yeah, guys. It's important too. You have to have you have to have a good balance of, like you said, yeah. just mentally kind of taking yourself away from it, just for even if it's for a couple of hours, just so you can come back to it in the yeah, in the sure. right mental capacity. It's otherwise you just you're gonna like you said you're gonna lose. Your, your your passion your intensity to it you know, i was i was just working doing scouting and video constantly it was it was non-stop every single day i got to the end of the season and you kind of sit back and have to take a deep breath about uh, and understand kind of how how intense that season was even though it's quite short it, it makes you kind of truly understand how intense uh, a 10 10 month season is you know in europe like with you know like the premier league or uh, la liga or or the championship in England, for example, they play lots and lots of games, lots of cup games. You, you, it's just, it's just quite overwhelming how how intense it can be. Um, yeah, we're. I mean, at the end of the day, we're lucky to do what we're doing, but uh, of course, at the end of the season, it gets uh, a bit uh, tiring with all the traveling. We live in a big, big country, so when yeah. we had the away games, I we both remember the six away trip, uh, six away games in a row. Uh, it's yeah. tough, but it's part yeah. of the job, and uh, you just gotta manage everything. But uh, especially for the coaching staff, we saw you guys how hard you guys work, and mm-hmm. that sometimes so tells everyone... me: are, are you actually want to be a coach after your career? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot. You have to be you have to be married to the job. It's not it's not a job. It's or a career. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. You truly are. It is everything that goes on in your head. It is everything that goes on in your life. Your your commitments to everything. Um, it's it's. It's extremely intense. You, you are, you are well, married to But with the passion the that we have, everything comes easier, right? So I feel like what you're doing, uh, at the end of the day, you're just happy. You're, you don't wake up uh, thinking, oh, it's one more day at the office. You wake up and you're yeah. happy to go. So Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're, we're in lucky such to a be in this world. privileged, lucky position to be doing yeah. uh, or be involved in the sport that we love the most and we get paid to do it and we get paid to watch it and we get paid to play it. Um, there's there's not too many young I won't. Young I won't people, lie to you. I went girls. to work with, I went to work with my dad uh, two weeks during this off season. 
just yeah, to help yeah. them out. And I could tell you, I'm really lucky to do what I do because <laughs> this eight to five do? thing what is he... not for me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is his job? What's his job? Well, he owns a car garage. They do a bit of everything. So I was just helping yeah. him uh, with paper stuff. Uh, and also sometimes in the shop. So you're not an so office guy, hey? It was a tough two weeks. So I could say after <laughs> three days I wanted to leave. So <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. At least he, uh, at least he uh, got to spend a bit of time with you uh, during the off season. And yeah, yeah, yeah. A little spending bit bond, time with hey? family for me is super important. Uh, I'm lucky to be home. So yeah, yeah, I, that's brilliant. Um, well, I appreciate you coming on. I just want to ask a couple more questions. If there's yeah, uh, sure. Just a moment longer here. Um, was there anything that you wanted to, uh, you know, like advertise? I'm going to put your uh, Instagram on the um, just below here, and and then uh, some of the young guys who maybe don't know who you are or getting to know you with Halifax, with uh, in the CPL fans of the CPL can follow your uh, social media accounts. Um, so I'll include that. Is there anything else that you wanted to kind of add? You know, maybe about your story or anything like that. Well, uh, since we touched in the and the trial things uh mm-hmm. a bit there just want to pass like a message you know for for younger people like uh getting declined by club it's it's not nothing wrong with it, it comes in the, it's part of the game uh like i said earlier i i got declined by many clubs in europe when i went on trials and at the end of the day is not go down and just keep working you know it's get up and keep doing what you're doing and what you love and at the end of the day, it's the one door is going to open. It's going to be the right one. Uh, mm-hmm. After all the trials that I did in Europe, it didn't work out. I learned with that. We learn with each experience that we have in life, mm-hmm. in and outside the field. And uh, that's why I was super ready when I came to Edmonton. And I think mm-hmm. in in my in my career, if I didn't have all the, the, the decline clubs from the past, I don't think I would be as ready as I was when I when I got the AFC Edmonton trials. So it's just a little advice and uh, just keep working and have fun on what you do. It's like you said, it's uh, we do it with a passion. We do it because we love it. And honestly, at the end of the day, if you keep working, something's going to show up for you. Nothing so else would you have just, to be doing, is there? Exactly. So just a small message for the the mm-hmm. young ones, the future of this country. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and just to sign off here with uh, a few quick fire questions. Um, just gonna get you to answer on the spot, all right? So putting me on the spot, your, huh? yeah, exactly. Love it. What's your, what's your favorite team? Favorite team, Sporting Lisbon. Sporting Lisbon. What's your favorite food? Uh, meat steak. steak. Actually, no seafood. Uh, sorry, seafood. <laughs> <laughs> seafood. What's uh, a current show that you're watching right now? Uh, I'm actually. I just started a documentary about uh tennis. It's like Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. It just came out. What's the last movie you watched? Uh, 13 Hours. Have you read a book recently? Sorry? What's the last book you read? What book did you read? Kobe Bryant. Love it. Um, was your favorite country at the World Cup outside of Portugal and Canada? Oh, uh, Brazil. Uh, what time do you wake up in the morning? Eight. What's your go-to song right now? Go-to song right now? Uh... Ah, uh, La Cancion. It's a Spanish music. Okay. Um, what's one thing you are looking forward to this season? Uh, reach the playoffs. Playoffs. Good, tar- good target. Uh, and final question, probably an obvious one, Messi or Ronaldo? Uh, Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> so looking like a true Portuguese fan. I appreciate you coming on. I, I, I love Messi. It. I can't deny it, but it's Portuguese. Ronaldo is your boy. Yeah. <laughs> all right i appreciate you coming on west thank you so much no thank you to you thank you for having me and uh hopefully i see you soon huh? awesome brilliant